The Radio Memories Network is brought to you in part by Liberated Syndication. Podcast publishing made easy. Libsyn.com. That's L-I-B-S-Y-N dot com. Continuing America's love affair with comedy and those lovable characters that made us laugh. We now go back to the early days of radio comedy and our imaginations with our featured comedy presentation. In 1943, the Judy Canova show hit the airwaves and ran for 12 years, first on CBS and then on NBC. Playing herself as a love-starved Ozark bumpkin dividing her time between home and Southern California, Canova was accompanied by a cast that included Mel Blanc as Pedro, using the accented voice he later gave the cartoons Speedy Gonzalez, Ruth Perrot as Aunt Aggie, Ruby Dandridge as Geranium, Joseph Kearns as Benchley Botsford and Sharon Douglas as Brenda, with Gail Gordon, Sheldon Leonard and Hans Conried also making periodic appearances. The Sportsman Quartet joined the show in 1943 and backed Judy on most of her songs, and the Charles Dant Orchestra provided the rest, usually supporting Canova's country warble. Western singer and actor Eddie Dean also appeared with Canova on numerous occasions during the 1930s. Now let's join this week's episode of The Judy Canova Show. For a breath that sweeps, and a smile that dazzles, it's Colgate Tooth Powder. And for a riot of fun, it's America's wacky, wistful, wonderful scatterbrain, Judy Canova. But I sure did have a big time out there in Hollywood. You know Hollywood, where men are men and all the girls are married to Charlie Chaplin. (laughs) Uh, I I suppose y'all wonder what I was doing in Hollywood. Well, sir, (laughs) I was one of myself there for a while, but I really was out there on a bond selling tour. I got up on a platform with some of them beautiful gal movie stars, you know. And we was giving away kisses with each bond we sold. I wasn't doing so good. <laughs> so finally, I got real mad. I looked ball right square in the eyes, and I says, Boys, one kiss from me will put new life in you. Then one fella stepped up and said he'd buy a $500 bond if I'd kiss his tires. <laughs> but, <laughs> but really, folks, the most fun I did have on the whole trip was coming back out here on the train. I ain't never seen so many men and women in uniform in all my life. I, even the conductor had a wound stripe. A civilian tried to get on. A civilian tried to get on. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, I was really very popular on the train, too. Uh, the soldiers sat around admiring my traveling outfit. I guess it was the first time they'd ever seen open-toed army shoes. <laughs> And that ain't all that made the eyes bug out neither. Now for this also, week's episode of the, the Halls of Ivy. The traveling bag, like the one I was carrying. <laughs> but, but, I was ready. My folks give it to me. It's uh, genuine cowhide. I know it's genuine cowhide because it's got four handles on it. <laughs> my, my, but that train sure was crowded, especially in the women section. I never did get any sleep all night long. It was pitch and toss, pitch and toss. No wonder I was sleeping between two waves. <laughs> <laughs> but the soldier boys was really wonderful, Tommy. Uh, they took a vote, and you and the selected me as their pinup girl. I'd have been pinned up there yet if the conductor hadn't helped me down. <laughs> Moon. 
I had a fellow courting me for quite a spell. Mid simple life of country folk. Now when she told me that he had to go away, while it's so hot, it almost broke. I said, you know it's true, I love you best of all. So honey, don't you go away, away. Glad to know you, Tex. Now, just a minute, Mr. Niles. You do, I don't like the idea of you picking up with strange men from Hollywood. But Mr. Niles is a radio announcer. A radio announcer? Hmm. I hope I didn't get here too late. Now, wait a minute, Tex. I'm the new Colgate tooth powder salesman in this territory. Well, I'm warning you, Mr. Niles. You stay away from Miss Judy. She's our own little gal. Well, all the boys around here is kind of sweet on Miss Judy. Oh, don't pay no attention to Tex, Mr. Niles. The fellas is just sort of crazy about me on account of my pigtails. Oh, uh, you mean the boys really like your pigtails? Why, they sure do. At barn dances around here, when they say swing your partner, they ain't kidding. <laughs> Why, would you believe it, Mr. Niles? The boys even fight over me. They do? Why, sure. Uh, just a few weeks ago, two fellas got to fighting over me so bad that they finally settled it with pistols to see which one would get me. Sure was thrilling. One got me in the leg and the other one got me in the arm. <laughs> well, well, we can't just sit around the depot here all day. Got to get on home. Hey, Tex, where is Sylvester? Well, Sylvester? Yeah, he's my handyman, Mr. Niles. He started to be here right now with the station wagon. Well, while we're waiting for Miss Judy, I'd sure like to get my guitar. Us boys from the ranch would like to welcome you with a little number we've been practicing while you were gone. Okay, Tex, what you waiting for? You boys all got chestnuts? Let's go. When evening chores are over at our ranch house on the plain, all I've got to do is lay around. I'll saddle up my pony and go riding down the trail to watch the desert sun go down. Riding down the canyon to watch the sun go down. A picture that no artist is to paint. White faced cattle lowing on the mountainside. I hear a coyote 
whining for its mail. Cactus plants are blooming, sagebrush everywhere. Granite spires are standing all around. I'll tell you, folks, it's heaven to be riding down the trail when the desert sun goes down. Mr. Niles. Oh, that was swell, Judy. Say, is that your station wagon pulling up at the other end of the platform? It sure is. What's Sylvester stopping down there for? Gee, I hope he ain't been drinking again. Well, I'll call him for you. Oh, oh, Sylvester. Sylvester. Gee, I guess he doesn't hear me. Oh, that ain't no way to call nothing, Mr. Niles. Let me show you how we call things around here. Oh, Sylvester! <laughs> Mrs. Canova, what's the idea? What's the idea? <laughs> Look what you did to my station wagon. You twisted the chassis and stripped off the fenders. Run for the hills, folks. The dam's broke. <laughs> and so a fella can't stop in a pool hole for a bottle of sarsaparilla <laughs> without getting insulted. The fine thing, a fine thing. Say, would you mind stepping back? You're shrinking my fascinator. <laughs> now look here, Sylvester. We don't want any insolence from you. Now watch out how you talk to me, friend, or I'll push in a face. Be careful, Mr. Niles. Oh, he doesn't scare me. No, he just took the curl out of your hair. <laughs> now listen, folks, we're wasting time. If you want to ride, jump in. Jump into the station wagon. Now where do you want to go? Sightseeing? No, Ranch Paul Canova. Come on, get in, Judy. I'll open the door for you. Hey, who's going to open the door for me? Open it yourself! <laughs> oh, you list, huh, bud? Say, I have a good notion to report you to the OPA. The OPA has nothing to do with this. Give them time. They'll think of something. <laughs> oh, come on, Sylvester. I want to get to the ranch. Now, listen, you be careful how you drive, too. Oh, I know how to drive, Miss Judy. This is a pushover. Say, uh, do you people mind if I sing as I drive? No, just turn on the windshield wiper. <laughs> Mr. Satterley, then. I heard that corroded the floor. I couldn't bear it without you. <laughs> Don't get around much anymore. Take it easy there, partners. You're breaking the law. Now, wait a minute, Constable. I'm Ken Niles, the Colgate tooth powder salesman, and I can explain everything. Oh, you can, young fellow. And I suppose telling people how to brush their teeth gives you the right to brush the fenders right off of our cars, eh? Well, no, but well, I... Well, what's more, uh, I think you've been drinking. Why, well, I'll have you know a bottle has never touched my lips. Oh, a cork sniffer, huh? <laughs> now, let me smell your breath. Say, that smells wonderful. What is it? What is it? What is it? Why, for a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles, it's always Colgate tooth powder. Colgate tooth powder? You don't say. Uh, <clears throat> uh, you tell that to the judge, young fella. Why, I'll be glad to. You just let me tell him. So you see, judges, I was telling the constable here, everyone wants to be attractive and well-liked, no matter what their job may be. And a sweet, wholesome breath is mighty important. Yeah, I suppose that's true. 
I always thought that the stuff you use on your teeth just cleans them. Or just about sweet bread. Well, you see, Colgate Tooth Powder not only brings out all the natural brilliance of your smile quickly and safely, but it's a scientific fact that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder stops oral unpleasing breath instantly. Uh, don't you have to do nothing special? Why, no, that's the best part of it, Judge. You just brush your teeth night and morning with Colgate Tooth Powder. And, Judge, use it before you go out in the evening, and I'll promise you a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles. Constable, this here fella knows what he's talking about. Case dismissed. <laughs> Hughes at the piano, Boogie Woogies, the St. Louis Blues. This is the one and only Rancho Canova. What you think of it? Well, it looks like very fine land, Judy. How's the dirt around here? I don't know. I ain't here none yet. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes my housekeeper. Howdy, Aunt Phoebe. Oh, there you are, Judy, my dear child. Welcome home. Mr. Niles, I want you to meet Aunt Phoebe. Oh, hello, Aunt Phoebe. I beg your pardon, young man. You will call me Mrs. Gussin Goose. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you'll have to call her that. She's kind of sensitive about the name Phoebe. Uh, Judy Canova, where did you pick up with this city slicker? That's what I asked her, Aunt Phoebe. You keep out of this, Tex. Listen, Aunt Phoebe, I met Mr. Niles down in Hollywood. He's a radio announcer. A radio announcer? Get in the house, bar the door, lock the window. Now, wait a minute. This is perfectly ridiculous, Mrs. Gussel Geese. Gus and Goose. <laughs> you don't have to worry about Judy. She's perfectly safe in my hands. Hands? Claws would be more like it. <laughs> Why, even your ears come to a point, you wolf. <laughs> oh, Aunt Phoebe, you hadn't ought to say things like that. Why, Mr. Niles ain't no more of a wolf than Tex is. That's close enough. <laughs> Judy Canova, I'd like to know where you lived while you were in Hollywood. I lived in the same house with all them beautiful New York cover girls. Gee... I'd sure like to know where they live. Well, Tex, I'm afraid where those cover girls live is a military secret. You're wrong, Mr. Niles. That's a military objective. Judy. <laughs> Judy, I, I hope you don't ever go to Hollywood anymore. I like you the way you are, just a sweet little country girl in cotton stockings. I don't want anything to happen to you. Oh, don't worry, Tex. As long as I wear cotton stockings, nothing will. <laughs> Judy, it's all very well for you to talk, but I remember my last trip to Hollywood. <gasps> what a terrible experience. I was walking down the street, minding my own business, and a big brute came up to me, took me in his arms, and kissed me. Did you get his address? 
no, darn it. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 no, darn it. I didn't want it. Well, uh, Mrs. Gooselgauss, I'll have to admit... Goose. Uh, sorry. I'll admit that was a terrible experience, but believe me, nowadays you'll never see girls kissing strange men in Hollywood. Mr. Niles, you must be a civilian. <laughs> This is no joking matter. Mr. Niles, if you're half a man, I want you to help me. I want you to show Judy just what a young girl like her can run into in the big city. Well, how can I help you? I want you to grab me in your arms and kiss me. Now, wait a minute, Mrs. Gossel. Oh, Goose. this young lady needs a practical demonstration of pitfalls that await the country girl. Come on, Mr. Niles. Kiss me. Oh, very well. <laughs> out of a puddle of mud. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Niles. Come on, I'll show you to your room. Uh, here, Judy, I'll open the door for you. Uh, hey, I don't see any doorknob. The doorknob is down by the floor. Well, why so low? That's so the boys won't have to stand up when they come home at night. <laughs> well, Mr. Niles, this will be your room right here. How do you like it? Ain't it got a beautiful view? You can see Black Bottom Mountain. Well, all I can see is the laundry hanging on the clothesline. Where's the mountain? Right there, right through Texas underwear. <laughs> oh, shucks, you can't see it now. The wind's blowing. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, you gotta catch it between flaps. <laughs> well, Judy, if you don't mind, I'd like to freshen up a bit. Where's the bath? The bath? Well, certainly. Don't you have a room with a bath? <laughs> no, sir. Out here, we just have a room with a path. <laughs> And make yourself comfortable here, Mr. Niles. Oh, Miss because Judy! I'm... Miss Judy, come on quick. The man from the meat packing plant's here, and the boys are all ready to start the roundup. Come in, Tex. Come on, Mr. Niles. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Gee whiz. Gosh darn. I don't know why they have to make all that racket. I can't stand the sound of gunfire no more. It always reminds me of my dear old pappy. Well, why? Was he shot? Practically all the time. Oh, <laughs> well, friend, no matter how attractive a person may be with, unless their breath is sweet. Why it's so important for all of us to be shed wholesome. And friends, give unpleasing breath instantly. Yes, Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath. Lively, active foam penetrates right into the tiny hidden holes to work right where much oral unpleasing breath starts. And you'll be delighted, too, to see how it all the natural brilliance and sparkle of your teeth. So, for a breath that's sweet and a... Use Colgate Tooth Powder. Colgate Tooth... Lord, and thinking only of you Walking the floor Morning, night, and noon Really through my love me by, has me by, how desire, somebody's in her fond embrace, my love has me by. Before 
I say good night, I want to tell you all a wonderful story that that nice Fred Allen was telling me the other night. Seems <laughs> this way, see. Seems like the shortage of food has been a terrible hardship on the animals in the zoo. Well, there's one elephant there. He's getting so skinny that the zookeeper couldn't tell his trunk from his tail. <laughs> so he kept piling the hay up at the wrong end. <laughs> well, sir, you know that elephant might have been starving to death, but he was sure sitting pretty. <laughs> Mr. Allen, and good night, folks. Good night, Judy, and see you next week. And remember, folks, for a breath that's sweet and a smile that dazzles, it's Colgate Tooth Powder. This is Ken Niles speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.